As Croesus came down from the pyre, Cyrus asks who persuaded him to go to war with Persia. And Croesus answered, The one to blame is the god of the Hellenes. It is he who encouraged me to go to war. Otherwise, no one could be so foolish as to prefer war to peace. In peace, sons bury fathers. In war, fathers bury sons. Croesus then looks to the great city of Sardis being plundered by the Persians and tells Cyrus that they are no longer sacking my city, but yours, and advise Cyrus to recover the loot stolen, to preserve the Persian army from becoming corrupted by it, and Cyrus listens to his advice. Now we're told by Herodotus that Cyrus is so impressed with Croesus, he says to him, ask me for a gift, and whatever you want, you will have it at once. So Croesus replied, my lord, you could give me the greatest pleasure by allowing me to send these shackles to the god of the Hellenes, the one I honoured above all other gods, and so that I might ask him if he typically deceives those who have treated him so well. Now as you can see by what Croesus has said here, Croesus is obviously angry with the god Apollo, as he feels he's been deceived by what the oracle had told him. And to refresh your memory, what the oracle had said to Croesus was, quote, They predicted that if Croesus were to wage war against the Persians, he would destroy a great empire, end quote. When a mule becomes king of the Medes, run, and do not delay, nor feel shame at being a coward. Croesus sent Lydians to the temple at Delphi, and they threw the chains on the floor, pointed at them, and called the gods ungrateful. And this was the oracle's response. Fate to destiny is impossible to avoid even for a god. Croesus had to atone for the wrong of his ancestor four generations ago. This ancestor was a bodyguard for his king, of the family line of the Heraclids. He was induced by a trick involving a woman to kill his master and usurp for himself a position that did not belong to him. Although Apollo strove to delay the fall of Sardis until after Croesus was dead, he was unable to deflect the fates. Indeed, as a favour to Croesus, Apollo did gain as much as fates would concede. He deferred the fall of Sardis for three years, so let it be known to Croesus that his downfall and capture occurred three years later than his appointed destiny. And in addition, it was Apollo who rescued Croesus from the burning pyre. And as to the oracles given to Croesus, his accusation is wrong. The one on which Apollo predicted that if he made war on the Persians he would destroy a great empire was not considered wisely by Croesus. For if he had done so, he would have realised that he should have sent again to ask whether it meant his own empire or that of Cyrus. So, since he misunderstood that oracle and failed to question the god further, let him admit that here he himself is at fault. Moreover, Croesus also misconstructed the oracle from Apollo about the mule, for the mule cited in the oracle is Cyrus himself, who was born from the parents of different peoples and different social stations. So this was the Pythia's answer to the Lydians, which they brought back to Sardis and reported to Croesus. When he heard it, he had to confess that it was he himself and not the god who was in the wrong. And here Herodotus discusses one of the important themes that is discussed throughout the book, the theme of destiny and fate. And here he explains that the gods can't even avoid fate. The subject of fate and destiny is also discussed in Homer's Iliad and the Odyssey, where fate and destiny are portrayed as supreme and ultimate forces. For example, the fate of Achilles, who was fated to a short life, however a glorious one. 